In this module, we'll talk about meiosis. Meiosis is a type of cell division in which one cell gives rise to four daughter cells. Those four daughter cells have half the number of chromosomes or the genetic material as a parent cell. I would like to mention here that each of us has genetic contribution from both the parents. 50% of our DNA comes from one parent, the mother, and the other 50% comes from the other parent, the father. The chromosomes are in pairs. So we have 23 chromosomes, we have 23 pairs of chromosomes, or in total, 46 chromosomes. Here you, on the screen, you can see the karyotype of a male person. Karyotype is basically arrangement of chromosomes in descending order by size of stained chromosomes. Here you can see that there are two chromosomes 1, two chromosomes 2, two chromosome 3s, and so on and so forth. So chromosome 1, we have two chromosome 1s. One came from father, the other came from the mother. If we have two chromosomes from two different pairs, from two different parents, it also implies that during the formation of the embryo or the fertilized egg, the cells that produce that fertilized egg or the embryo, the number of chromosomes in those special cells or the gamete cells, sperm or the egg was also half. So how do we reduce the number of genetic material, the number of chromosomes or the genetic material in half. The trick is basically this, the DNA divide only once, whereas the cell divides two times. So in this process, we end up with products which have half the amount of DNA as compared to the parent. Let's look at the process. Meiosis 1 has a very long prophase. Prophase can be categorized into three different stages. Early prophase 1, it begins when the chromatin begins to condense after the interphase. The chromatin that is condensing has already divided. The chromatin has divided during the S phase, which is part of the interphase. Also, in early prophase 1, the centrosomes have also divided and they are moving towards the opposite end of the cell. Here I would also like to mention that the nuclear envelope is still intact, like it was in mitosis, prophase of mitosis. The chromosomes at, in mid-prophase, we will be able to, although in pro, early prophase 1, we cannot see the chromosomes as discrete structures. In mid-prophase, the next stage, we are able to see the chromosomes as discrete structures. Even at this stage, the nuclear membrane is still intact. The centrosomes are continuing their migration towards the opposite ends of the cell. Here you will see the important feature here is the homologs are pairing. Just as I told you that there are two chromosome ones, the two chromosome ones will pair up with each other. Each chromosome has already been divided. So each chromosome, individual chromosome, consists of two chromatids. Homologs, when they pair up, we have four chromatids lying next to each other, as you can see on the slide. In the next stage of prophase, the late prophase one, we will see that the nuclear envelope now starts to disintegrate and now the chromosomes will become available for connection with the kinetochore microtubules. The other important part of late prophase, as you can see on the screen, I will point it out also. Chromosomes, sister chromosomes exchange parts. We we'll look at this process in more detail. Here, for example, you can see part of the blue chromosome is now red, whereas part of the Red chromosome is blue. I will raise the line so you can uh, look at the same region. Chromosomes have exchanged pieces with each other. So, uh, because of this process, we can increase the gene genetic diversity. I'll explain that later. But right now, we are talking about meiosis. We are going to talk about meiosis in two phases meiosis 1, meiosis 2. I have just described the meiosis 1 three stages of prophase of meiosis 1. Let's continue and look at the other phases of meiosis 1. The next phase of meiosis 1 is, of course, metaphase. Metaphase 1, 
here like in mitosis we talked about the chromosomes have lined up at the equatorial plate here now please notice that the chromosomes when they line up together on the equatorial plate the homologs are adjacent to each other in mitosis the homologs don't pair up in meiosis they pair up and they are lying next to each other here the spindle fibers they will connect to the kinetic core of the two homologs homologs each homolog is going to go to the opposite end of the spindles they are one chromosome one will go to one side of the cell the other chromosome one will go to the other side of the cell so the homologs are now separated in anaphase also please notice that during the prophase of meiosis 1 these chromosomes also exchange different parts of each other this process gives genetic diversity anaphase as we have talked about in mitosis similarly here starts when chromosomes in this case in mitosis the sister chromatids were splitting apart from a single chromosome here in anaphase of meiosis 1 the homologs are splitting up and they're going to the opposite end of the poles telophase follows anaphase 1 in telophase the nuclear envelope starts to reform the chromosomes start to become decondensed they start to loosen up and lose their shape as i told you that there is a exchange of pieces little fragments between the homologous chromosomes let's look at this process in a little more detail here you can see the two chromosomes red and blue think of them as chromosome 1 like the one we saw in our karyotype chromosome 1 cell from a human cell so both the red and blue are chromosome ones they're homologous chromosomes they contain they, they are not identical but they contain similar genetic information so when these two chromosomes pair up homologous chromosomes pair up there's a process through which these two chromosomes can exchange pieces with each other when this occurs a point in the chromosome is created where two chromosomes are crossing each other this is basically you can see that un under the electron microscope also this is basically called the crossover point and this results in two chromosomes which have now exchanged parts and they are no longer in their original condition or the parental condition next we will talk about meiosis 2 we'll continue with this process we will talk about meiosis 2